it's, it's interesting they have a spiritual pathway that includes and incorporates relationships. That's what A Course in Miracles does. It's not off into the cave or cover yourself, avoid this, avoid that. And, you know, it's almost like when you allow relationships to be used in that way, it's, it's a very intense pathway to God. Because the, the mirroring is, is absolutely uh, intense. It, you might say that um, what, what is getting exposed uh, is the belief in sacrifice, but it's also this belief in loss. I think that's the most heartbreaking thing about relationships is this, when relationships seem to end, there's a devastating loss. I mean, an absolutely devastating sense of loss. And that's why it's so devastating that, that it influences you even approaching a relationship. Uh, you know, it's like once you've gone through that sense of, of devastation, you're much more cautious, you're much more closed down, uh, you've got the shields up, uh, you're not going to get torpedoed, and, and you know, you can walk through life almost like going through the motions of trying not to get hurt like that ever again. Not really living a full life, kind of more like a zombie. Uh, who's been rocked by the first devastation. And in the Course of Miracles, Jesus says, He says, you have many strange beliefs, but perhaps the strangest of all your beliefs is the belief that you can lose the ones that you love. And that's coming from Jesus. That's giving us a tip that these relationships, it's going to take courage, it's going to take faith, you're going to have to come with willingness, you're going to have to come with a prayer to the Holy Spirit, and it's going to involve hanging in there. The Holy Spirit is not going to counsel you to have, I call them Dixie Cup relationships. Everybody remember Dixie Cups? Little paper cups, all in a row, where you just, they're very small, you get a little sip, disposable, that's the ego, that's the ego sponsoring Dixie Cup relationships. And everyone who's gone that that road with the Dixie Cup relationships knows that it's very unfulfilling. There's not any depth. You may get some ooh la la pleasure, but you don't get any depth. You get a little sip, and the ego says, now move on. And get another sip, and move on, move on. And you never reach the potentiality of a deep, deep love that's actually inspired by divine love, you know, if you go with that route. And everybody knows, we've been through it enough, you know, we've been on planet Earth to go through it enough. Now, when you give relationships over to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will use the relationship in a maximal way, and then, even if you're in a relationship where there will be a, a, a parting of ways, we'll say, happily ever after, uh, that's still going to be maximized. That even in the section back of the teacher's manual, where he says these relationships are temporary in nature, and, and the two appear to separate. But the teaching and learning has been maximized. Oh, isn't that good? Coming from Jesus Christ, when you look back at maybe a relationship you had that was very powerful and intense, and there was a lot of love there, but there was a lot of other things that came in. And it's, he says, maximal. The teaching and learning was maximal. And then there are lifelong relationships. We were talking about that. Uh, was talking about his wife, and well, she lived to be, what was it, 60? 64. 64 yeah, years old. 38 years of marriage. 38 years of marriage. I was, who would call that a lifelong relationship? He says, these are, these are quite rare. Jesus comes right out and says it's quite rare. But, but if they decide to learn it, the perfect lesson is before them and can be learned. He's pointing to a sustained, committed relationship in which if they decide to learn it, the perfect lesson is before them and can be learned. This is what we would call forgiveness. If they hang to the end of the ride, if they, if they say, okay, I'm going to forgive, I'm going to 
let go of any hurt, any guilt. I'm going to let the, the relationship be used by the Holy Spirit to raise up all this unconscious darkness. And when I'm tempted to blame, I'm going to forgive instead. Every time I'm tempted to blame, I'm going to forgive. And every time you do that, you get a little bit closer to that gateway we'll call complete forgiveness or atonement. You get closer and closer and closer to that gateway. So, it's not so matter, the Course is not judging relationships at all. It's not saying, it's not saying this is the form you should go for, not at all. It's saying, whatever the form of the relationship, pray, ask the Holy Spirit, invite the Holy Spirit into the relationship for the Holy Spirit's purposes. And the ego is going to be shocked when this happens. It will be very disjunctive to the relationship to invite the Holy Spirit. The ego had its own purposes for, it was trying to hide from guilt and, and hide the guilt and keep it from being exposed and healed. And when you give the relationship over, instead of saying, we're going for a happily ever after form of so many years or whatever, we're going for healing and let the form be what it's going to be. We're going to hang in with this and go for the healing. I got to say one thing. While you were talking, we had a deja vu moment. Because I'm quite certain that this has happened before. <laughs> with you sitting there and you talking and me sitting there. I, I, really, I really believe that. And I think it's only because uh, when you choose a new life, you see snippets of how your life is going to be. And I believe that that's what deja vu moments are. Like the coming attractions of, of the movie that you're going to, or your life that's going to be. You see little, little scenes, and then you'll go on to another scene, and then you'll see another scene of the movie, just like when you go to a regular movie. And I believe that what just happened now was a scene from a life that I chose. And, and that's what I remember. And that's what I believe days of a moment. I mean, I could be totally off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably am, but that's what I believe. Uh, yeah. It's your movie. 